Hello guys and welcome back. The past couple weeks I've been making some videos covering some softwares that I use frequently or infrequently in my recording, streaming, etc. processes. We covered OBS, we've covered Bandicam. Today we're going to be covering Radeon Live, which I don't know if they still call it that, but it is the recording and streaming software in the AMD Adrenaline Edition driver suite basically here so when you do try to open up your adrenaline driver suite here you press record and stream to get to this tool this handy tool that comes with every amd graphics card just like nvidia shadow play comes with every nvidia graphics card it will ask you to do some basic setup and then you'll get access to everything that i have in front of me it may try to simplify the setup guide for you but you can customize it. We're going to talk about how that works here. So first and foremost, you have the record screen. It will show you some base controls, whether to record a region or a full entire screen and which screen you would want to record on. It'll show you the microphone level. You can set push to talk. You could show a recording indicator. You could allow it to record the desktop or not. And then that's basically it. This is just a preview currently of your prior recording. This is the last recording I did, which is the Bandicam guide, which released a week ago. And otherwise, it'll show you a preview of just your current recording. If we go over to live stream, it's a very, very similar UI, but there is a built-in chat UI available. You can have multiple scenes just like you can with OBS, and every scene is a canvas that you can put different things on, though there's not as much customization here. This one is definitely a simpler option to OBS, but with a little more versatility than Bandicam does. You can select an account for any of these specific platforms that you wish to link. Otherwise, you can pick custom stream and put in a stream key from any other streaming service that is not immediately supported. The scene editor, this is how you customize those scenes that appear right over here at the bottom of your live stream control panel. This is how you customize the scenes, but there's not a lot you can do. These are the only things you can add, a video, GIF, image or browser source. You can have the indicator present or not of whether or not you're streaming and recording. You can have your webcam show or not, and you can have a built-in chat overlay, which is actually extremely handy. It's way more complicated to get something like that set up on OBS. So that's actually very nice. And then you can see just your media in general, any media that it detects that you have on your device. The reason why this is loading up so slowly is because whereas I'm on an SSD right now, all the recordings are on an HDD, so it's taking a couple of seconds to retrieve that metadata, but it's just checking all the media on your device and you could play them back. Just like Bandicam lets you do in software, except this will not just scan one folder, it's scanning for all the media that you have on your device across different drives as well. But now let's get to the settings program, which is clearly the meat of why we're here, right? You have the account linking here as well. For some reason, they've put it here. And then this is everything we need to know. So let's look at live streaming first. You got your streaming profile, which you can just use presets, low 720p, 30 FPS, one and a half megabit. Oh, that sounds chunky, but that's the preset. Medium, 60 FPS, 720p, two and a half megabits. I really wouldn't recommend any of these so far. High, is 720p 60 fps at three and a half megabits that's getting better and ultra is 1080p 60 fps with six megabits these seem to be made with twitch in mind and these are all terrible presets and i actually wouldn't recommend doing any of these because these are fucking terrible so you can select custom and put in your own information here you select a resolution and personally i do everything at 1080p 30 fps because i would personally stream at something like seven megabits YouTube allows eight, Twitch allows six, regardless. But this is not, you know, something, this doesn't give you the option to determine what you're actually streaming in, meaning it's almost certainly defaulting to ABC H264 streaming. And since this is AMD graphics driver software, that means it's gonna be using your on GPU encoder for that. And considering this enhanced filtering specifies it improves AVC encoding, then that means this is almost certainly H.264 and you don't really have any options here, unfortunately. 
Maybe there's more further down and I just forgot them. We'll see. Enhanced filtering though, this would improve AVC encoding, which is important because AMD's H.264 encoding is notably not too great. Their H.265 and AV1 encoding is great. Their H.264 encoding is notably bad and it really doesn't improve. You can choose to archive the stream and this is a fancy way of saying record at the same time as streaming. It's just going to basically copy the exact settings you have here to duplicate the stream onto a drive. This will not be any more demanding than just streaming really because you're only encoding the stream once. You're just having a drive save it at the same time. It only becomes a problem is if you're like running an OS on a hard drive plus the game plus the recording plus the stream like that would be an issue. But if you're on an SSD, it really doesn't matter at all. You have your media information here. So you could choose where the media goes, where it will go, where it will be saved. You have instant replay if you want to rather than record a video, you can just hit one handy hotkey and it will just save the last however long, 60 seconds, for example, as a instant replay. Shadowplay supported stuff like that. I remember showing that off in that guide, even though that was six years ago. You could do the same thing with a GIF, and there's an in-game replay, which is kind of the same thing, but it's more for playback. You have your audio and video capture devices. Video capture device, this is your webcam, essentially. Audio capture device, this is your mic. It's gonna pick up the desktop audio by default. Now let's look at the recording settings here you can say here as well if you want to record desktop you can have that indicator here as well they add many places for this indicator it's quite redundant borderless region capture this allows window regions to be recorded so instead of a full screen application for example a window like this or a video game that you have in borderless full screen for example and then you have a recording profile which is going to have probably terrible presets, but let's look at them. Low, 720p, 60fps, 5 megabits, 144 audio bitrate and kilobits. This is, this is better. Here in recording, they actually give you an option of how you want to do this. I'm betting the reason they don't give you the option for live streaming is because, again, they're only really thinking about Twitch, and Twitch only really supports AVC, H.264. So that's probably why that is, but YouTube supports AV1 and H.265, and they have for months, years in the case of H.265. So the fact that they don't allow that customization is sad, but it is simple at the very least. It is defaulting to AVC, H.264 recording. So this is a definite low quality recording, but ultra compatible and not too crazy. You got that enhanced filtering here as well. Stereo or automatic. So you don't have to pick between stereo, mono or surround. It'll figure it out for you. Separate microphone track if you're going to edit and you want to be able to cut out parts where the mic is playing. For example, maybe you have background noise and you want to cut that out. Separate microphone tracks. Great for that. Just be wary. Anything that saves a separate microphone track is not going to play in a player well. So you might play it back before editing and you might think it's missing your microphone or it's missing the actual desktop audio. It's not, that's just what happens when you separate tracks. Medium has you, holy crap, matching the in-game resolution, which is better, 60 FPS, 10 megabits, that's weird. I don't like that. Still AVC, high has it at 30 megabits in-game. This is really just so that you don't have to think about it and know how bit rates work. Okay, so you wanna match the bit rate to your resolution, which is why you never want to select in game here. That's terrible. So just as some general guidelines, I'm gonna go off, let's say 30 FPS right now. For 720p and under, three megabits and under is good if you want to save space, but 720p can scale up to six megabits with up to 60 FPS pretty well. 900p wow they offer 900p almost no one's going to use that that's going to be between 720 and 1080 but 1080p is probably i imagine the most standard thing after 720p for making content like this for 30 fps this is a recording after all not a stream you can set basically anything you want i would set 1080p 30 fps 14 megabits video but YouTube's only really going to work with eight. Still recording higher is not necessarily bad because a higher quality video being transcoded on YouTube's 
end to 8 megabits is going to look better than an 8 megabit video having the same done to it. The audio bit rate's up to you. They let you bring this up to 320 here or as low as 32. 144, the default is fine. 128 is also perfectly fine. This is like the same audio quality that you get on a good CD. All right, this is like every MP3 you've ever heard is this. 160 is probably what I would pick. It will just detect what encoding availabilities you have on your hardware. It's clearly not going to display any CPU encoding because I guess, you know, it's here for your graphics. And that means you won't be able to very easily use this software with a capture card because you wouldn't be able to use a CPU on another computer for this. This is just whatever your graphics card supports. So AVC is the worst quality one. This is the oldest. This is 20 plus years old, but it is a newer version of the GPU encoder, depending on how new your graphics card is. They'll probably keep improving it over time. This is the most compatible thing with everything. And so it's good for that, but it's very old school and doesn't like low bit rates as much. Going up to Hevic, H.265 is going to be anywhere between 30 to 50% more efficient with the bit rate. So you can account for that. And AV1 is even more efficient. AV1's like nearly brand new. There's only at the time of recording, you know, one generation of graphics cards that even has an encoder that supports this. The one I'm recording on right now is one of them. Um, but a lot of editors, we're talking about recordings here, a lot of editors don't support this. YouTube supports it for streaming, but this software doesn't let you stream with it. A lot of editors are just kind of getting support for this right now, so make sure to check if your editor actually supports AV1 or not. You can transcode it with something like Handbrake later, which I might do a tutorial on eventually, but for right now, at time of recording, AV1, that's going to be your best quality, but it's, uh not very well supported currently. Hevic, also not very well supported in terms of posting, but in terms of editing, it's been around for like 10 years, 12 years, I think, something like that. And this is way better supported and it is way better, especially in AMD's terms than AVC. AVC is the most compatible, but it's, it's gonna require more bitrate for the same picture quality. So go with what you want. Personally, I would go with Hevic. I would set it to 14 megabits and 160, 1080p, 60 FPS. That's what I would do personally. And then you can set it to record your microphone or not. The volume of the microphone level, this can be further customized in your actual microphone settings in any attached software or window settings. You can have the push to talk for it right here. You can even give it an audio boost if the default is not enough, but be careful because then you might run into some audio clipping, which is gonna sound very crunchy which is not good on anybody's ears. Just go watch my guide that I made on OBS in 2018, not the one that was two weeks ago, the one in 2018, and you will very quickly learn what audio crunching is and why, or clipping, sounds crunchy, and why you don't want it. But that is how you use this. This is very simple, not as simple as Bandicam, but much simpler than OBS. And this is going to be, by far, the most compatible software with your graphics card if you have an AMD graphics card, just like NVIDIA Shadowplay is the same for NVIDIA graphics cards. The options it offers for streaming, very limited. Recording, much better, much better. And so if you're recording, I, you know, I'd recommend Shadowplay to most. I would recommend ReLive here to most. OBS is a little more complicated and maybe a little more niche use case on whether you need it. This is pretty good. If you guys have any questions further, about the software. I do use this occasionally. I just don't use it nearly as much as Bandicam and OBS. I might still be able to answer some of your questions. And if you guys want to see me cover anything else, if you guys want help understanding anything else, feel free to leave that in the comments below. For now though, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you found this helpful and I hope to see you on another video.